I have clicked onto the tropical tidbit for Sunday evening, September 3rd. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. We're going to talk about Irma, but first I want to briefly mention this area of low pressure that's developed in the southern Gulf of Mexico. We discussed a couple of days ago that this was possible, and we do see a little bit of rotation today as a disturbance has formed rather disorganized in the southeast bay of Campeche, uh, but nonetheless something that may have a chance of developing a little bit over the next couple of days as wind shear is, is light enough here that it could allow some development. If the system moves north, the shear gets higher and less favorable, but while it's tucked away here in the Bay of Campeche, some development is possible over the next couple of days. Steering currents for this uh, are, are light. It's going to likely meander in the southern half of the Gulf of Mexico. The, B, the big upper trough that's going to come down into the central U.S. that will interact with Irma in time is likely to also keep this disturbance penned up to the south. So we're not currently worried about this really coming up and bringing rain to areas that don't need it in the northwestern Gulf. Um, and it, wherever it goes, it's likely to move quite slowly in here. So likely to enhance rainfall in Mexico over the next couple of days and potentially develop a little bit, but the Hurricane Center only gives it a 10% shot at development right now. So we'll just keep an eye out on that over the next couple of days. And now to Irma. Uh, this hurricane continues to move west-southwest across the central Atlantic. Here's the close-up view. We've seen the eye sort of pop in and out. You saw a tiny eye during the daylight hours, uh, but it has uh, acquired a rather disheveled appearance this evening, and the eye has all but disappeared from conventional satellite imagery. Uh, there is a, an eye clearly evident, and you'll see that on recon data in a second, uh, but it has really had some inner core organization issues today, likely because of another eye wall replacement cycle that occurred, and we've seen the motion continue uh, generally toward the west-southwest. There have been some wobbles in the track, and you'll see it occasionally move maybe due west and then really sharply southwest, and then resume a west-southwest course and these are likely what we call trochoidal wobbles, where the system, when it has an outer eye wall like the system had for most of today, the inner eye will occasionally rotate around the inner rim of the outer eye wall. So the actual motion of the system will look something like little cyclonic loops as it moves on its long-term track toward the west-southwest. So occasionally you'll see the system moving in a really funny direction, but it's usually only for a short period. So the overall motion remains the same here, and this is the track that is now becoming a concern for the Leeward Islands, as the track could bring the system pretty close in a couple of days. We'll get to the track in a minute. First to the recon data, we had our first plane fly into the storm today, found a pressure of about 960 millibars. Uh, this is a little deeper than anticipated, but the winds were about the same as estimated. So the analysis intensity of 115 miles per hour looks to be about spot on. This is a category three hurricane, very dangerous as it continues to move off toward the west southwest. We see the wind field here is expansive enough. All, all of these colors in yellow and above here are roughly tropical storm force winds near the surface, and this shows you uh, the wind field expands, you know, hundreds of kilometers, and so even a close track to the islands is going to be dangerous for some of the islands there, as tropical storm conditions could extend well away from the hurricane here. This was the radar shot from the hurricane hunters in the eye, and so we can see the, the nice well-defined eye wall. It is open on the western side here, so it's not complete but it is, it is larger than the eye that we saw on visible satellite imagery, so this is a further evidence that that outer eye wall has become dominant and started to uh, complete the eye wall replacement cycle that it was occurring today, and uh, that could be contributing to why the core looks disheveled. Uh, another reason, though, is uh, that there is a little bit of shear impacting the system. Uh, we continue to see on water vapor imagery here this upper low to the northwest and this ridge to its east, and so this is pushing northerly flow underneath the outflow toward the storm. You'll see the cirrus expanding north, but there's actually another flow underneath of that cirrus pushing down on the hurricane, and this is simultaneously what is pushing it southwest in track, but also potentially tilting the eye a little bit. Some of the plane data suggested to me that the eye is a little tilted north to south with height, and this could explain why it's struggling a little bit in terms of intercore organization today. However, that doesn't seem to be enough to really weaken the system. The, the plane in there is finding a, a somewhat steady intensity on the passes it's made so far, and uh, it appears that we are maintaining a, a Category 3 intensity, and it's basically flatlined for the moment. However, as we go farther out in time here, this is what we're looking at on the GFS for, uh, again, one of these area average soundings. Just ignore this part, of the, uh, this part of the map, but we're doing a box around the storm. Focus on this part here. This indicates uh, the flow changing with height near the storm. You'll see again the steering flow in the lower layer is different than the steering flow in the mid layer. So this is that shear 
that we're seeing on some of the data. This is a northerly shear that may be tilting the hurricane a little bit at the moment. It's the same thing that's also pushing it southward. But watch as we go out in time. This is the analysis. But once we go out to tomorrow, you'll see we still see the northeast wind here, east wind of the low levels. But then by the day after that, by Tuesday, we see that this flow starts to switch and become more uniformly out of the east with height. And this is where the hurricane now starts to turn back toward the west-northwest near the islands. Simultaneously, the shear weakens a little bit here. And unfortunately, what that means is that as the water continues to get warmer at the same time, the shear is lessening. But all, both of these things are more favorable for the hurricane. So we have a powerful, dangerous hurricane now. It could get even stronger as it approaches the islands in a couple of days. And this is obviously a concern as the wind field could get uh, even more intense than it is now. This is the forecast track from the National Hurricane Center, again, showing that bend back toward the west-northwest, currently expected to be quite a close call for the Leeward Islands. There are hurricane watches out for the likes of Antigua, Barbuda, Anguilla, uh, Montserrat, and St. Kitts, and uh, the other islands in between. And what does a hurricane watch mean? It means hurricane conditions are possible within 60 hours, so two and a half days. We're talking about late Tuesday into Wednesday. We could start seeing adverse conditions in the islands. This track has remained north of the islands, however, the track has shifted a little bit southwest over the last couple of days, and a lot of model runs have shown the ridge north of the storm being a little bit stronger up here than originally forecast, and the runs have come a little bit farther southwest over time, nudging ever, you know, ever slightly closer to the islands here. And so if you're in these, these leewards and Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands, you need to be preparing for this storm, as it's very possible the forecast could nudge just a little bit south and give a direct hit to some of these islands. And even if you don't get a direct hit, uh, that doesn't mean that storm surge, high winds, and flooding can't be problems. It doesn't take the eye to cause life-threatening conditions. So do be prepared for the system as we are now within the three-day window, and the system is expected within two and a half days to be impacting this region. And beyond this now, you can see uh, the day four and five forecast extending out now f beyond the Leeward uh, Islands and threatening the Bahamas, the Turks and Caicos. Uh, perhaps even Hispaniola. Again, the track has been shifting farther to the southwest with time, and we now see it getting really uncomfortably close here to these areas, and a lot of models now take the storm right through the Bahamas, and this is obviously a concern. Still a day four and five forecast, but the trend is concerning for the Turks and Caicos in Bahamas, and you guys should be uh, starting to prepare for a powerful hurricane as well, as uh, this will be a very uh, very nasty storm if it actually takes this kind of a track as it is expected to be quite strong remaining a major hurricane on this track there doesn't seem to be a lot standing in the hurricane's way to weaken it as it moves into this region and uh, so this is something to take very seriously uh, if the track is pointed at you like this uh, definitely make sure you have a hurricane plan ready in this region uh, as this could be a be a dangerous storm if you're uh, looking uh, in the united states uh, wondering if this is coming uh, our way here uh, this is the 500 millibar forecast from the GFS. This is day three, so this is Wednesday. Here's the hurricane uh, just north of the Leeward Islands. And here's that ridge to its north. And you can actually see here that it noses in like this toward the Bahamas. This ridge, again, has been a little stronger on recent runs, which is forcing the hurricane more toward the Bahamas on a lot of forecasts now. But you can see this giant trough digging near the eastern United States. In most conditions, this trough would be enough to turn the hurricane sharply out to sea after moving through the Bahamas, it would turn northeastward. However, as we've been talking about for the last few days, the situation is more complicated than normal. The problem with this trough is uh, that there's this big ridge to the west. Now, we, we've talked about the possibility before about the southern end of this trough splitting away while the northern part moves on. That is no longer being shown in a lot of model forecasts. Instead, what happens is this ridge builds in, this whole trough just sort of moves to the northeast and then gets cut off by the ridge altogether. So if we go out from Wednesday to Friday, this is what happens. The ridge builds in over Canada, and this whole trough sort of moves over New England, and you can see that it's sort of cutting off from the main jet to its north. This is an unpredictable situation uh, because this, this is what we call an anticyclonic wave break here. And with this cutoff like this, these cutoff troughs and cutoff lows are more unpredictable than regular troughs that look like that. This trough is, is more predictable than this, which gets harder to predict correctly. And a lot of funny stuff can happen here in terms of the steering flow. If the hurricane is in the Bahamas at this time, if this trough is strong enough, the hurricane could just turn right to the north and follow the trough out to sea here. It's very easy for that track to happen. 
But if the trough is a little farther to the north and this ridge is able to nose in a little bit more, and then if this ridge is able to build in and connect with this ridge, then you can start directing the storm northwest toward the United States because the steering flow will be southeast to northwest instead of southwest to northeast. These, these situations could all happen, and in addition, there's another fly in the ointment. There's the shortwave trough over Montana here, or the Dakotas rather, by day five, and this is going to come diving down into the southern United States. So we have two troughs now to deal with, so by the time we get to day seven, this trough has moved out over the northwest Atlantic, but this trough has dug in over the south, and this can serve two functions. The flow around it can help direct the storm northward and perhaps try to nudge it out to sea, but if it gets too far south, it can also pinwheel the storm back into the coast and bring it into the continental United States. So I'm telling you all this, it's a lot of scenarios, but that's because there are a lot of scenarios on the table. There's still a lot of uncertainty with this forecast. Here's the forecast hour, it's 180, that's seven and a half days in the future, and the system isn't on shore yet on the GFS model. So this is a day seven forecast, quite uncertain still, lots of time to watch this, lots of things could happen. The interplay between this trough, this trough, and the ridge all in between here is very complicated, and we don't really know what's going to happen here. What we do know is that forecasts have shifted considerably southward in the area of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos, which is concerning immediately for that area. If you live in the United States, this opens up the door for anywhere from you know Florida to up the eastern seaboard to be potentially impacted, because when you have a storm that's trying to turn to the north like this, the approach angle you know, any small shift can cause Florida to be affected, or the Carolinas, or New England, just in small shifts in track, or it could just go out to sea. A lot of possibilities here, and we're not going to be narrowing down any kind of landfall location, or no landfall location at all, anytime soon. It's going to take a few days to, to figure out that forecast. And if you're wondering if the storm could impact Hispaniola and Cuba, the answer is yes. The forecast has continued to shift south, and if it continues to do so, if this ridge continues to prove stronger than analyzed, we could see the storm get shunted close enough to the Greater Antilles to cause big problems in Haiti, Dominican Republic, and Cuba in terms of heavy rainfall at the very least over these tall mountains. So there are a lot of areas that need to be watching this storm, and we're going to be tracking it very closely over the next couple of days, but the immediate threat is to the Leeward Islands, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico over the next two to three days as the hurricane is likely to make a very close swipe at least, and a direct hit is possible in some of these islands. Hurricane watches are up, and hurricane watches will likely extend into areas uh, of the Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico in about a day or so as well. Uh, so do be prepared for this storm. Bahamas and Turks and Caicos, the track is shifting toward you. It is still four to five days out, but it's concerning. So do be prepared for this storm to be in this region within a few days. And again, in the United States, a lot of questions. A lot of questions. Again, the best course of action is if you're worried about the storm, ha make sure you have your hurricane plan ready to go just in case the storm comes to your state, your general region. We really don't know any details at this point, but if it comes, just make sure you're ready for it in case it does. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.